Info Warriors. Alex Jones here announcing the first of many trips that I'm going to take across this wonderful United States that we live in. And we get so busy here at InfoWars.com, the nightly news, the daily radio show, the documentary films, and all the other things we're doing that I tend to never go out and give speeches anymore. And I've got a lot of ideas bubbling around in my head about the history of the New World Order, what makes them tick and how to defeat them. So I'm titling this key speech I'm going to give. It'll run around two hours long, Blueprint to Defeat the New World Order. And we're also going to have a surprise premiere of a short documentary film we've been working on at the event. First off, I'm going to be going to Dallas, Texas, Sunday, February 19th, 2012, to the historic Lakewood Theater. And the next Sunday, February 26th, I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida. You can find out more about the events and buy tickets at InfoWars.com forward slash events. Now, unfortunately, every event I've ever had, we've had to turn people away. So get your tickets early at InfoWars.com forward slash events. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this world. And the craziest of all is this explosive awakening. I can't wait to meet you and shake your hand. I'll see you in Dallas and I'll see you in Orlando. InfoWars.com forward slash events. It's like some kind of open joke. 
like it's some type of game. Disgusting. I've had football scandals for times. It's always somebody who's worth like $50 million and thinks they're part of the elite without any even middle class in the globalists who will come up to me and say, well, Alex, you know, maybe 9 11 is an inside job, but you know, it takes things like that to get the people doing what they're supposed to. Like this sack of garbage thinks they're part of the system because they can understand false flag terror and understand that's what it takes to defend America. No, if they did evil things like that to, to defeat evil, it'd be evil because you can't become evil to defeat evil like the ring of Sauron and Lord of the Rings. doesn't work that way. But they're not using evil to defeat evil. They're not even following that fallacy. They have given themselves totally over to it. The globalists compete with each other to see who is the most wicked and ruthless. And in that process have become total madmen as I documented in this earlier presentation that you saw. And that was only the tip of the iceberg. Our problem in compiling that 40 minutes was that there was so much we didn't get to, so much we couldn't cover, so much we couldn't show you how much crisis this world is in. Now with that said, I've given you the blueprint of madmen. I want to give you the blueprint to defeat the new world order. This world's engineers, the controllers of this planet, always seek to teach you that resources are finite. They always seek to teach you that for you to win, somebody else has got to lose. They know full well that's not how this world works. That we have unlimited potential. That we're made in the image of the Creator. Whether you believe in that or not, humankind has given us Beethoven, literature. They've given us all the science, all the beauty. They've given us people like Whitney Houston's voice. All the things that are in humanity. All the good. And it's by recognizing that good and that potential and by reaching for what's good and empowers us that we have hope for the future. Our ancestors, and God knows they weren't perfect, understood sacrifice and standing up for what's right. And that's the only reason we're here today. Why do you think the United States, such a small area geographically for the land service of this planet, and only 4.5% of the world's population, 100%, 7 million, the United States is 45 or 4.9, depending on which actuary you look at, but less than 5% of the world's population. Why would the United States, with less than 5% of the world's population, have more than half the wealth of the world? Freedom! Freedom! And it doesn't mean that our higher level of freedom was perfect. It doesn't mean that there wasn't injustice. It didn't mean that there weren't problems. But compared to every other place in the world, we didn't have the corrupt elites on top of us trying to shut down human destiny, shut down human ingenuity and creativity because they're threatened by it, because they want a monopoly. Because the United States only had a few glimmers and moments of freedom, we developed the highest test scores. We developed the most scientific developments. We created the media and the literature and the art and the music that has conquered the world. And the globalists, the global scientific engineers saw that. They were aware of that. They knew that. And so they did everything they could to take that over and to take our energies and turn it against humanity. So now America is in a paradox. America, right here at this center place where we live, make no mistake, is where the battle will be fought. It's where the decisions will be made. We are the great evil empire. But we are also the great deliverer from the tyranny. But we have to decide who we are. That's why the struggle between good and evil is being decided here. Because we have the birthright of liberty. Because we have the basic freedom. Because we are armed like no other nation on earth. The second point. <laughs> it may be a bad speech, it may be the best ever, but I'm going to attempt your help to go through all these points. Alright, I'll start at the top. Again, I want to thank you 
you all for being here. Quote, I should have had it quite put it properly, but forget the credit, the person who's not in the arena. What matters is the person who is in the arena, who knows the great challenges, the great struggles. Because even if you fail, at least you, you tried to dare greatly. That's what matters, is trying. That's where it all starts, is taking action. That's what's fulfilling. And I'm going to say this to you here and now. Because I was told several times last week and again today that I am the 21st century Paul Revere. And I said, no. You are the 21st century Paul Revere. And this is not a battle. This is not a war against the undefeated British Imperial Redcoats who've never been defeated. And George Washington lost almost every battle for five years, but they persevered. It was the continuing to fight. It was the resistance that was the victory. That's why the system attacks that victory. Because it hates it. Anything the new order attacks, you better believe that's where the that's where the liberty is. That's where the freedom is. That's what's good. Not because it's perfect, but like King David of the Bible, the heart is right. That's what matters. None of us are perfect. And the system will try to tell us how we're bad, and how we're impure, and how we're not good. None of that matters. It's our hearts that matter. It's what we stand for. It's who we are. It's the final equation that matters. Do we serve light, or do we serve the murdering, destructive darkness? That's the question that you must decide, and it's a decision you must make. The system tells you there's not that decision. Because that decision is there, and that decision is where all the power in this universe resides. As Martin Luther King said, the universe bends towards justice. Providence is on the side of justice. Yeah. And the minute, the second you commit yourself to liberty and freedom and justice, even your body be killed, your spirit truly has victory. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
The enemy comes in, the spirit of the world, look at the standard against it. I hate to preach at you, but that's just what comes out of me as we face this evil. There's a new rule order they believe, and let me tell you what they believe in. You get anything you want, and quite frankly, devil ain't evil enough for it. Now continuing here, we must develop a blueprint to defeat the new world order. We are winning. We are having victories because humanity has power. And real men and women who have power, who have love, who have strength, who have courage, we always are ashamed of our power. We're always meek and humble in the face of evil. And we think that it's just our job to lay down to it. I'm here to tell you, it's time for humanity to stand up. and all their disease, and all their corruption that they gain power out of. And it's time for humanity to stand up in the info war and say, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this, but you want to fight, you got to believe in you. Well, I can't tell you, and I'm going to listen to them all, how many people tell me. I can't believe you did this, you did that, I'm not going to get you. Listen, these enemies are weak. And the minute you don't care, I tell you, they lose all their power. I don't want to die, I want my wife alive. I want to steal my wife and children. But you kill me, you want to get this system against you. Ten times the power, and that's why they have killed me. Yeah. So you have the power. Humanity has the power. to try to blind us and fog our vision because they're scared of you. The crooks know how humans work. They know the secret of humanity, but they seek to hide it. They seek to block you from ever fully developing. They seek to block you from ever becoming who you really are because they're scared of you. And always remember that. That's the secret. Got another line here. Point number three of about 40. Technotronic and technocratic power is built on illusion. It's built on fraud. It's built on lies. And you don't have to listen to what I say or believe what I say. All you got to do is start looking around. Start thinking for yourself. Start investigating things. And you will see it all right there. You do that, you get past your fear, you start reaching out to others. So many people reach out to people that I know this sounds cookie, I know it's bad and crazy, but I think we shouldn't trust the government. <laughs> A government with over 10,000 plus admitted programs, some programs, tens of thousands apiece, killing foster children, radiating people, shooting people up with syphilis, giving nerve gassing troops. I mean, it just goes on. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I think I might not trust these people. I feel like they only had troops over and over again marching to radiation after they dropped egg bombs, iron bombs. I, I, you know, they had the troops used to put in uranium with their own handbook says they're going to kill them down the road. I, I'm sorry I'm talking bad about these people. I, I apologize. I mean, think of how crazy that is. They just convinced us because it's the system, it's the establishment, and all of us do it. We're all part of the system one way or another. So, you know, well, you've done well now in the system. Now time to go to the next level and join the team and be pragmatic. That's the speech you'll get. And it's a load of bull because the people above you that are inviting you into the new order, they're slaves. They've sold out to it. They're, they're blind and they're cowards. You don't want to be part of them. Like Patrick Henry said, hey, Forget you are our brethren, our brothers. Go from us in peace. Crouch down and lift the hand that feeds you. Let your chains sit lightly upon you. As for me, get me over you, or get me down. You don't think the central bankers, through fraud and just fiat garbage they made up and paid politicians to save us. What are we going to do? we got some scientists, they start poisoning the water, they'll dump them down. We can get rid of a bunch of them and they won't wake up to this. This is really a good deal. we got some scientists that say they can make you live forever, too. Well, hell, let's kill all these people. I mean, 
listen, the Romans did it, every culture went and wiped out and why they come. I mean, this is just being done high tech, everybody. And they just zombify you. They wipe out your mind. They wipe out your soul. But humanity is so strong. Despite this fog we're walking through, despite everything they've done to us, we're still here. And you know what? It's going to boomerang on. Because once humanity knows it's under attack, and once humanity knows what's going on, nothing on earth is going to stop us. Yeah, no. another message for the global controllers and their camp followers and all their servants and all their slaves. We're not just trying to save humanity here. You people are clearly going to destroy yourselves. I covered that earlier. I mean, the genetic engineering, the weapons, the anti-matter weapons, all the, all the crazy stuff you guys are doing trying to one-up each other. Oh, really? You did that? We just produced something that will kill nine hours so they will release it. Oh, that's really great. Oh, you've got underground bunkers to protect you from that. You're going to be down in the bunkers with a bunch of people like you? You vampires, you vampires only exist off of us. Can you imagine some crypt a mile under the ground or some under some mountain with all these vampires who've killed us if they succeed living with each other? I don't think they thought this out. <laughs> What does waking up mean? What does waking up mean? It means you're no longer in a dream. Like George Carlin, he said, Yeah, it's the American dream. You gotta be asleep, Julie. <laughs> and if you expand on that, what does it mean to be a white? It just means you look at things. It means you don't just automatically buy what you're being told. It means, again, people say, oh, Alex Jones will do what they believe he wants. Believe the way I want. I mean, I mean, I'm so tuned into what's going on in the world, I can't even handle the stream of information. I'm more like an egg frying on a pan or something. Talk about brain on drugs. Talk about brain on reality. Look, I know a lot of people tune out of reality because it's hardcore. <laughs> be drugged to take a ride on this machine. And I'm not just talking about the ugly things in the world. Let me tell you something. I watch my young daughters running around playing games and drawing or fighting with each other. I mean, that's entertainment. These are happy, energetic creatures. My son, these are beautiful creatures, just like every other child I see. That's the spirit of humanity. That's what humans are before the world corrupts them. And that's the thing that makes me the sickest. The way this global system seeks to corrupt our youth and turn them against their parents. And the way Madison Avenue, you know, we're winning. But when we really win is we realize status means nothing. How much money you make means nothing. It means nothing. It means nothing. What matters is your heart and your soul and what you stand for. That's the value. That's your purpose. Now to the subject of trendies. Now, when I say trendies, what am I talking about? Well, that gets into Edward Bernays and psychological warfare and Madison Avenue and advertising. But it goes back thousands of years, really to China, but other cultures did it as well. They would get the Chinese royalty to bound their women's feet where they couldn't even walk. And the priest class would tell them because it was stylish. And you've got to be stylish. You're royalty. You don't walk. We feed you. And they said, well, God, it's trendy. Uh, that was the governmental class, the national security class, taking control of the great grandkids of some Chinese warlord that had taken over the area. They, they explained, first you wear big fancy outfits and crowns, so you impress everybody. But next, you're so royal, you don't walk. And to make sure you don't walk, we're going to bind your feet where you can't walk so that now the bureaucratic security class we see now taking over TSA is in control. And you can look at it in Babylon, you can look at it in ancient Egypt. Every culture did this. And you go back 500 years ago, it was illegal all over Europe to wear certain colors or wear certain outfits. Only the gentry could wear that. Only the royalty could wear that. Only the elite could wear that. And so people would kill, steal to wear a certain colored cloak. They would kill for that 
pair of Air Jordans like you've seen in the news. It's the same thing. And that way the system doesn't just make money every year. You've got to throw out that wardrobe. It's not cool anymore. Now you've got to get into the mindset and the idea. And so what they took the fashion, which bowed in people's feet, or in some cultures, put big boards on people's heads, so like cone heads. I mean, this is what priest class did. They, and the priest class would always sit back and laugh. Oh, we got the royals who used to run us 100 years ago wearing big boards on their heads. They can't even walk. Because <laughs> it's stylish. And of course, the, you know, the average tribes people, oh my God, you got a bunch of rings around your neck and a big cone head. Let me bow down to you. Or you can't even walk. Or, you know, you're wearing some big giant queenie outfit in England. Or whatever. This is the type of stuff that they would do over and over again. So, so many people, they get off on New World Order, global government. <laughs> I heard the TV laugh at that. I am trendy. <laughs> I mean, this is a pathetic victim of style. This is a pathetic victim of trendiness. And again, if you want to have purple hair, if you want to have 18 million tattoos or none or a big cowboy hat, I don't care what you're doing as long as that's what you like, because I don't see what you look like or what you're wearing. I see the content of your deeds. The point is, the globalists know how to sell you through trendiness. That is one of their main systems of control. I mean, I still have reporters call me up, or Nightline show up, or MSNBC, or Rolling Stone, or you name it, and they go, so, you imagine the world government. And I go, let me take you to the computer and say, I don't know, a thousand mainstream articles saying little government's been established. And I go, oh no, we don't want to look at those. Uh, literally, literally, nightline, like in the, the ABC Nightly News host looked at He said, no, we don't want to look at those. We just want to ask you about why you think it's real. <laughs> and I said, look, here we go. And I said, I'm not going to do this interview unless you come and watch this. Yeah. So I showed him Al Gore, the head of the EU, Herman von Rumpy, British Prime Minister at the time, Gordon Brown, George Bush, the world government. I showed him what the world government means, corporate fashion state. He looked at me and said, This happened in my office. He goes, They don't mean the same world government as you. Yeah. And, then the, and then I'll have Media Matters call me up. Ring, ring, Media Matters. Uh, the other Media Matters. I go, Oh, you're not George Soros. No, we're not. I call the Federal Elections Commission, who's dealt with funding it, and uh, the uh, you know, filings for nonprofits. I go, well, it says a million here, a million there. I mean, it shows he's the head guy. And they go, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, here's my biggest frustration. These people operate in a world where they're just used to everyone not knowing three branches of government, not knowing anything. And then they just say, there's no world government. They go, there's no world government. I read these police training manuals. They come in daily now. And it's like, and they talk about a world government run by banks. I just see one that says, go ahead and bring them in. And chiefs, don't get mad if your guys bring them in, because they're probably terrorists. I mean, you, I, I mean, you can watch European C-SPAN, those different fees, it's all world government, mega banks taking over, but they're telling the cops, if somebody talks about this, go ahead and arrest them. They're probably a terrorist and they'll kill you. But see, it's having an opposite effect. As people wake up to the hoax, as the world wakes up to this fraud, it has the opposite effect. They're like, well, everybody's saying world government, but you say it doesn't exist. The minute the public loses their trust in the system, it's over. The system has gone so over the top that that's their weakness. And so the question is, is humanity scum? Is humanity weak? Will we, will we give in to this technological tyranny? Will we be conned by it? Or, or can we see through this elaborate giant hoax? Because it was Hitler that said, the bigger the lie, the better, the more they'll believe you. And so when something is so giant, so huge, and everyone around you who's a bunch of trendies who goes along with whatever said because they're in the end group, they're yes men. They make being followers of yes men cool. That's what trendiness is. When all the trendies are saying it must be that way, you've got to be the person that says no. But you can't do it in a timid way. You are literally fighting for free humanity 
and talking to someone who's in a zombie-like state. And so how do you deal with them as your, your prerogative? I agree with Jim, Mars, that sometimes it's good not to preach but just ask questions. But in my humble view, on average, it's best to hit somebody in the head with a 2 by 4 Who's, who's saying something to me? They come up and make a joke when I'm in the grocery store. I, I turn around and look at them, and, and they think their disdain has any effect on me except for me think I can pity on them. So I guess it does have an effect, and they're laughing at me. And I just tell them, well, okay, I mean, if you really think things are going good, if you really think the government doesn't lie to you, if you really think everything's wonderful, I guess you're right. I guess everything is okay. You've got a lot of power. Drop into the system, and I turn away from them my shopping cart. Seven and twenty minutes. And they start going, "No, no, I, I agree with you. It's problem." Oh, oh, wait! You just wanted to feel powerful and make me feel like I was shunned for some little petty, petty power trip you're on. I'm way beyond that. I've done this with the police many times when they're trying to arrest me, protest and whatever. And I just go, "Oh, you really like your kids going off this tyranny? You really like playing these games with me? Just go ahead and arrest me. Go ahead and beat my head in. Go ahead and shoot." In the back of the control bar, because you got all the power. But know this, I'm not shelling out like you are. So go ahead and do it! And at that point, those grappling in the system lose all their power, because I don't care anymore, and I'm beyond all your games. I'm beyond your whole matrix, your whole system of bullshit. And so... What time? No, I don't want to take my time too much because you guys got to get home. <laughs> How long have I been going here? got so much strength. We've got all the cards in our hand and we just play them. That's all we got to do. Human destiny. We control our environment. Technocrats are engineering us. There's no other creature on this planet that can do one one thousandths of what we do. There are no creatures that can even begin to do anything. And let me tell you, I love elephants, I love whales. I love the raccoons that break into my garage and rob the refrigerator. I have to set a camera up to watch them. I'm ten of them made in my dad's house and took photos of them sitting on the counter sitting there eating apples. But they're not designing rockets. They're not building computers. They're not making beautiful music. And again, just value who you are. So much in defeating the globalists. Everything they do is about making you think you're crap. Making you think you're worthless. Making you think you're petty. So you need to buy into their system. When every human being on this world is beautiful and is amazing and is a creature of unlimited potential. But we are able to control our environment. So an inbred group of psychopaths, I'll get to in a moment, they, they, have, they are creating a false environment, like we're at the zoo or something. That's how they see us. Henry Kissinger writes books called The Military Dumb Animals. I mean, they constantly talk about how we're animals, we're scum, we're trash. That's how they always sell their abuse on different groups of people. And now across the board, we're dumb animals, we don't, we don't have a soul. They have a soul, they're eliminated, and they deserve to go on, and we deserve to die. No, we're just not twisted freaks like you that would figure out elaborate scams to, to, to cheat and hammer and screw everybody. It's you, the cancer, that is the animal problem. It's you that needs to be kicked off this planet.
So we control our environment just like this theater, this coliseum, this cathedral we're meeting in. This one was built in the 1930s, 80 some years ago. We control the environment. You individually, everything you stand for is incredibly powerful. Don't ever forget how powerful you are. So the, 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 the social engineers have created this artificial system. It's not complete yet. People say, well, are they in total control, Alex? No, they're trying to get in control. They've got a lot of power, they're able to steer things, and we're in there trying to steer the ship away from despotism towards freedom. And that's the issue. There's nothing they can do against people power. There's nothing they can do when the individual is enlightened, when the individual is aware, when the individual is involved, when the individual realizes that every little thing they do adds together and that many hands make life work. That is what the global system is afraid of. So they are creating an artificial environment for us all. We should become aware of it. We should realize all electronics, all systems we're given on record. I'm going to read Dr. Stallman, all the big engineers, are designed to control us. We're paying with the iPhones and all the rest of it for the back doors that they build into it. And I'm not saying, oh my God, don't use an iPhone because they control it or tracking us. Just realize you've got a powerful enemy weapon that's meant to be used against you, and you better use it against them. Because a weapon, a weapon can be used by whoever's hands it's in. Realize this is powerful technology. This is Star Trek right here. And this wasn't given to us because they want us to you know, buy their $200 phone made by slaves. This was given to us because it's meant to track and control us. So we're going to use this tool against them. And while we use the tool, we're going to talk about the Trojan horse built into it. You understand that? We're getting in the ring with the system. That's what we're doing. And we're aware of who we're in the, the ring with. Now, moving quicker here. Fighting tyranny is not work. It is destiny. It is fulfillment. Survival is winning. Wonderment is winning. Realizing how beautiful life is. Watching flowers grow outside your house. Or ants building an a, a, a ant bed. Or, or watching your children play. This is all incredible. And we're not going to get fulfillment from the globalist brainwashing corporate system. We're going to get fulfillment from what it is to be alive on a planet hurtling through space, orbiting the sun in the Milky Way galaxy. And with that, I'm going to give you a line from a rush song. Put aside the alienation, get on with the fascination, yeah. the real relation, the underlying theme. Reality is what matters. Look, I can talk to millions of people, more than three million people a day, but there is so much more energy. It is so much more real to actually be here with you now. And I want to talk about this. Here's Wired Magazine, the latest issue that Rob Jacobson bought and brought to me. Your next car will drive itself. And they've already said, and a whole bunch of states already have robot 18 wheelers and robot cars. And they're already saying, as I said they would do five years ago, the, co the robot cars have less wrecks. Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to drive. And the robot cars are watching you. And the robot cars know when you've been naughty. <laughs> and I've got all these articles. How they're going to do it. Just like all the drones. Oh, you think the military loves Ron Paul and is waking up? Yeah. We got like 10 years of everything's combat droids on the ground. And AI, self aware, autonomous kill drones. The new world is taking all your energy, all your work, all the science you develop, all the things you do, and building a Skynet. You know, Skynet predates Terminator. Terminator. The Terminator isn't, it isn't life imitating art, it's art imitating life. You can go pull up Pentagon documents about a sky grid Skynet from the 70s. And 
all the drones they were going to have. And then I interviewed the former head of Star Wars program. He said by the late 70s, we were told it was launched in the 80s, they already had hundreds of drones in orbit with Sabo DU rounds that could decapitate every government on Earth in one hour in the 1970s. That's where the national security state was. That's where your money went. That was almost 40 years ago. Why do you think they're so arrogant? But despite the fact that they have all that power, they're still scared of you for a good reason. If we can turn this around before they get their automated robot system in place, we've got a good chance of beating them. Once that robot system's in place, then it's time for God to step in. Yeah, yeah. yourselves what are you doing in this time of great challenge what are you doing to unlock minds go to infowars.com and prisonplanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information